Do you want to create some epic manga style scenes quickly and easily in Blender? Let's go right into it. First make sure you're using the EV render engine. Create a sphere to test on, and give it a new material. Give the material a name, like manga material. Go ahead and delete the principal BSDF. Add a diffuse BSDF node instead. Next bring in a texture coordinate node, and then a Voronoi texture node. Run the object socket from the texture coordinate node into the vector socket of the Voronoi texture node. Set the scale to 20 and the randomized value to 0. Next you're going to want to add in a math node. Change the mode to multiply, and plug the distance into the top value. Add another math node this time with the mode set to add. Plug the multiply node into the bottom value of the add node. Now make sure the bottom value of the multiply node is set to 0.3. Now finally add a shader to RGB node and place it between the diffuse BSDF and the add node. This will convert all of the shader detail, such as shadows, highlights, and midtones into color or RGB to allow us to manipulate them ourselves. Following the add node, create a subtract node. Plug the add node into the top value of the subtract node and set the bottom value to negative 0.1. Finally, to allow us to manipulate colors, add in a color ramp. Plug the subtract node into the color ramp and then the color ramp finally into the surface of the material output and that is the main bulk of the work done. Firstly, make sure the color ramp is set to constant instead of linear. Now what we need to do with the color ramp is choose a color or two and then create a variety of shadings for our color to represent the shadows, highlights and midtones of our objects. You can see I've gone ahead and chosen 5 colors in total to create this variation. You can choose how you space them apart, but spacing them apart like this works the best for me. Now what you're going to want to do is add a sun to the scene and set the strength to about 4. Now you can play with the sun's rotation and get the lighting that you're looking for. That is the basics of the shader all done. You can add this material to any object, and it is highly customizable based on your needs for that specific object. This is because of the nature of it being a procedural node setup, allowing you to change each little part individually, which is really awesome. Something cool you can do for more complicated textures, as you can see here, I have created quite the spider web of a node tree, is to plug an image texture through a color ramp for fine control into the diffuse BSDF's color socket. This will allow you to pull detail from an image texture or to use it as a mask for different colors, like I've done here. This has another layer of complication, but it can be used to create really awesome visual results. Despite it looking quite complicated, as you can see, it's all fairly repetitive and quite logical overall. And if I want to come back and customize things, I only have to really mess with a few different nodes to get what I want. It looks a lot more intimidating than it really is. When you've got a more complex object in your scene, playing with the rotation of the sun is very satisfying and you can make some really cool animations out of this. Another key factor that you might notice is the outlines, which add a lot to the scene. They also dynamically adjust depending on how I've moved the camera and how I move the objects in my scene. This combined with the dynamic material shader creates an incredibly awesome look. You can see without the outlines everything looks a lot worse, a lot less sharp, and a lot less like a manga panel or an anime scene. I will now show you the best and most robust method of adding outlines that I have come across so far. First you're going to want to add a grease pencil blank to your scene. Give it a name, like outlines, or just leave it as default if you're speed running. Now you're going to want to select this object and make sure that the keyframe is on frame 1. Next, go to the modifiers tab and add a line art modifier. Have a collection of all of the objects that you want outlined, and select that collection here. For layer, just select the default GP layer, and for material, select the default black. Now you can play with both line thickness and opacity here. And for art in this manga or anime style, I say that a line thickness of 3 or 4 works the best personally. This gives a good combination of adding fine detail and sharpness to edges, without intruding on the picture and making it seem too cartoon-like. You can also head over to the material tab and play with the base colour if you for some weird reason don't want a black outline. Lastly, make sure that the grease pencil is set to render in front in the viewport display so that you don't get any weird issues with the grease pencil getting hidden behind things. You can see, as opposed to a lot of other methods, this will show up in the viewport and not just in the final render after a composite. And because it's a physical object in the scene, it actually shows up even when you're not in the material preview or the rendered preview. Which is really cool because it means that you can work with your outlines without even having any textures loaded in. Finally, in terms of render settings, make sure your display device is set to sRGB. View transform should be standard rather than filmic because we're going for vivid look. And for the look, I would recommend high contrast. After you render out your scene, I would highly recommend doing some post-processing on it and taking it from something like this to something like this. I've used GIMP to correct the curves of my blacks and whites because the original was a bit blown out and a bit too bright. I've also corrected for the hue and saturation and faded it out slightly so that the colors are more true to what they are actually meant to be like. This will probably take some tweaking, but you're pretty much good to go now. I really hope that this video was useful or inspired you, and if you have anything you want clarified, I'd highly recommend you check out my other 2 minute long anime material tutorial. 
This goes over the basics in quite a fast way, and condenses down much of what I've learned over the last few months of research and experience. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more epic Blender tutorials and art on the way. Subscriptions are much appreciated. I'm also always very grateful for any constructive criticism or feedback you may have. It's been Yeeson, and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Bye bye